Citizen Spokesperson Ashley waxman -Bakshi. Today is August 29th, 2024. This is the daily briefing of the Israeli Citizen Spokesperson's Office. We are live on Instagram, X, YouTube, and LinkedIn, and available afterwards wherever you get your podcasts. Please start submitting questions in the chat, and as always, like and subscribe to help us reach a wider audience. Today is day 328 of the October 7th war. Hamas has murdered children in Israel for decades, and Hamas leaders are declaring they'll murder more and more until Israel is destroyed. Hamas official Khaled Mashal said Hamas should resume suicide bombings. Hamas already tried to carry out a suicide bombing in Tel Aviv last week. Thank God the attack failed and only killed the bomber himself. Hamas pioneered suicide bombings against civilians in Israel in the 1990s and 2000s. Palestinian terrorists detonated themselves at pizzerias, cafes, dance clubs, and on bus after bus after bus. They orchestrated multiple kidnappings and shooting attacks. Hamas and other jihadi terror groups murdered hundreds of people. On October 7th, Hamas was controlling a statelet in the Gaza Strip. Hamas had thousands of rockets and weapons brought in from Egypt under the Philadelphia Corridor. Hamas had tens of thousands of terrorists trained in their territory, funded by Qatar and Iran. Hamas massacred around 1,200 people on October 7th. Parents in front of children, children in front of parents, elderly and infants. October 7th was the deadliest day for the Jewish people since the Nazi Holocaust. But it wasn't Hamas's first experience with mass murder. Hamas is telling us they will always try to murder Israelis. That is why this war cannot end with Hamas on its feet and hostages in Gaza. Israel's policy can be summarized with three Ds. Destroy Hamas, demilitarize Gaza, de-radicalize Gazan society. There are troubling reports about Hamas's leader in Gaza, Yahya Sinwar, and Israeli hostages. The Jewish Chronicle reported that Sinwar only has around 20 living hostages. He said to keep them handcuffed beside him as human shields, one reason Israel has not yet eliminated him. According to Israel's count, 108 hostages remain in captivity in Gaza. Dozens are presumed to no longer be living. The Chronicle reports that the rest of the hostages, living and dead, are held by other Gazan terror groups, groups that refuse to release the hostages even if Israel concedes Hamas's demands. Sinwar is a monster. Hamas and any other group holding hostages are pure evil. If there is any truth to these reports, it adds another dimension to Sinwar's monstrosity. Sinwar and Hamas cannot be Israel's neighbors. Israel will continue to do everything it can to bring home our hostages, as we have just seen this past week with IDF forces rescuing and freeing Qaid Farhan al Qadi from captivity and retrieving the body of an IDF soldier who had been killed on October 7th and was held in Gaza. And Israel will do everything it can to ensure that there can be no more hostages taken tomorrow. Today, the EU foreign ministers are meeting. EU foreign policy chief, Joseph Burrell, hinted at an agenda item. Can you guess what it is? It's not supporting Israel, whose people are under attack on seven fronts. It's not condemning the Iranian regime. It's not condemning Hezbollah or Hamas. No, Burrell focused on the real villain of the Middle East, the Jewish state. Burrell is seeking sanctions on Israel's ministers. One may be Israel's foreign minister, Israel Katz. Burrell said that he wanted to include in our list of sanctions some Israeli ministers who have been launching unacceptable hate messages against the Palestinians and proposing things that clearly go against international law. Why does Burrell want to sanction Israel's foreign minister? Because Katz supports Israel anti-terror raids in the West Bank this week. Katz pushed back, accusing Burrell of targeting him with false claims. Burrell is painting support 
for self-defense as hate. Burrell said the operations in the West Bank must not be an extension of the war in Gaza, including full-scale destruction. Burrell is pretending Israel is choosing to fight a war that Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, Iraqi militias, and other Palestinian terror groups operating in Judea and Samaria, all backed by the Islamic Republic of Iran, declared on Israel. Burrell is saying Israel, a sovereign state, does not have a right to defend itself. This is what everyone should know about Israel's operations taking place now in the West Bank. The raids were launched to stop Palestinian suicide bombs, like the one attempted in Tel Aviv last week, and to prevent more massacres. European leaders seem to have trouble understanding this. The Deputy Prime Minister of Belgium said, genocidal policies and statements should not go unpunished and also called for sanctions at today's meeting. These diplomats are sending a message. The message is that if Hamas continues to try to murder people in Israel, Israel will be condemned for stopping the murders. It's insane. Tell your leaders, we reject this absurd and immoral position. Anyone who claims to stand against murder must stand with Israel against Hamas and others seeking to spill innocent blood. Now let's take some questions from our audience watching live on social media. Earlier today, the UN Security Council unanimously renewed the mandate of UNIFIL, the United Nations Interim Force in Lebanon. Does Israel view this positively? So UNIFIL, uh, which has been in uh, Lebanon from uh, the United Nations, a force that is supposed to help keep the peace and the calm in the region, which has been there since uh, uh, 1978, is not doing its job, clearly. Uh, we already had a war with Lebanon in 2006, which ended with a, another UN resolution, 1701, calling for Hezbollah to put down its weapons and back off the Israeli border. UNIFIL's job was to ensure that that happened. Where has UNIFIL been since 2006? Where is UNIFIL now, since October 7th, since Hezbollah started launching rockets and anti-tank missiles and suicide drones towards Israel? Where is UNIFIL? What are they doing? What good does this extension do other than waste your precious tax dollars? There are a number of questions from people on our social media platforms. I see Robin and Adina on Instagram who are asking about the reports about a humanitarian pause so that Israel can facilitate the transfer of polio vaccines into Gaza. Can you say a few words about Israel's efforts to fight Hamas on the one hand while also trying to avoid humanitarian catastrophe on the other? So since the beginning of this war, Israel has always uh, done both, has fought Hamas on the one side and on the other side has done everything in its power to facilitate any humanitarian aid to enter Gaza. As you know, because you have been following the Israeli spokesperson's uh, office for the past few months, you know that it is actually because of the United Nations that much of this aid was not reaching the Palestinian people, but it was never Israel that did not allow aid to enter. And so Israel will always uphold any uh, international law and has no intention to create a humanitarian crisis in Gaza. So Israel is experienced in doing both and will continue to do both. On the one hand, do everything militarily to end Hamas's military capabilities and bring home our hostages and facilitate humanitarian aid, including vaccinations and medical supplies into Gaza. Esther on Instagram writes, a synagogue was attacked a few days ago in France. Do you think that this trend is more likely to spread more and more as Hamas has announced that it wants to resume suicide bombings? So unfortunately, this isn't a new trend. Um, if you've been following the news closely over the past decade, there has been a rapid increase in anti-Semitic events, violent events um, and attacks on synagogues all over the world. 
of course, October 7th has fueled anti-Semitism in um, tremendous amounts, like we have not seen in many, many decades. And um, so I don't think it's right to call this a new trend. I do think that the Jewish communities around the world need to be more alert than they have been in the past. But this just shows why the, the state of Israel is even more necessary today than it ever was. We have a state, we have our sovereignty, we have a place to protect Jews if they feel unsafe wherever they are around the world. All the more reason to support the state of Israel and keep yourselves safe in your communities around the world. There's a report in the Times of Israel that 146 square kilometers of vegetation have been scorched in the north since October 7th. Much of it caused by rocket fire, the same situation that's happening in the south by the Gaza border. Can you say a few words about how the Israeli people are dealing with the challenges of war in the home front? Yes, certainly. So as you can imagine, uh, with uh, approximately 80,000 Israelis from the north still displaced from their homes, um, this is playing, a, a, the Israeli citizens from the north are paying a huge toll, um, you know, mentally and psychologically. And I can tell you from personal experience, as a mother, I have four children. We live in the center of Israel. And uh, we're beginning on September 1st, we're beginning our new school year. And in every one of my children's classes, there are displaced children from the north who are being integrated into their classes now. So not only were they deprived of their school year last year as, the, uh, as Hezbollah was attacking them since October 7th and they were displaced, but now we are going into the second school year where these children are displaced and are finding themselves having to integrate into new schools, new communities. Aside from that, I'd like to also um, just mention um, a charity. If you are interested in helping out Look up a charity called Save a Farm. They are doing great work in helping Israel's agricultural co uh, community, the farmers that are doing such important work and brave and dangerous work by continuing to cultivate our agriculture and supply our fruits and vegetables um, to the state of Israel. So make sure you look them up as well on social media. Okay, hey, we have time for a couple more questions. Adam has asked about the role that Egypt is playing. On the one hand, Egypt is a mediator in the negotiations with Hamas. On the other hand, many of Hamas's weapons came through the underground border between Israel and Egypt. So how does Israel see the role of Egypt? Positive, negative, or something in between? That's a good question, and it's a complex one. Um, I think it's, it's somewhere in between because as you've mentioned, uh, Egypt is playing an integral role right now with the negotiations, so we need them. Also, we have a peace treaty with Egypt, which is still holding up. And as you mentioned, on the other hand, they, you know, at, at, at best turned a blind eye to the amount of weapons that were being smuggled into Gaza. And so I think time will tell. I saw recently um, an interview on social media where, um, from Arab social media, talking about how the majority of the weapons that were smuggled in were under Morsi's uh, leadership in Egypt. So hopefully under new leadership in Egypt, we're no longer seeing that. And hopefully part of the negotiations, again, I'm not sitting at the negotiation table, so I can only tell you as much as I know that has been published. Um, I hope that part of the negotiations really will be um, new cooperation for the Philadelphia Corridor between Egypt, Israel, and perhaps the United States to ensure that uh, no longer weapons can be smuggled into Gaza via Egypt. Our final question today comes from Jame on Instagram, who asks, are there any news stations that you trust to give you truthful information? Where do you get your news? Well, I can certainly tell you where I don't get it from. Um, so what I do I, is I, I follow Israeli media, but I also make sure that I follow uh, different sources to make sure that I'm, you know, not receiving any bias. There's actually a, a good uh, app that I just downloaded. It does cost a little bit of money, but it's called Ground News. And what it does is it um, you it shows you news from different uh, sources, and then it will tell you how, um, in terms of percentage, how much they believe it to be accurate and factual. And it will also show you where that. Um, news source is placed on the spectrum between right wing or left wing 
to help you decide um, how accurate you believe it is. So it's a cool app. I'm still kind of playing with it. So recommendations for it will come in the future, but look it up, ground news. So that's all the time that we have for today. Thank you very much for tuning in. As always, we are here every day, Sunday to Thursday, uh, for the daily briefing on all social media platforms. Make sure you are following us on Instagram, uh, X, YouTube, and uh, receiving your podcast, uh, hearing us on podcast wherever you hear your podcast. So we will see you again Sunday, three o'clock Israel time. Have a good weekend. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like share and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dijabnik signing off.